is thermo film one. Okay, basic concepts. A uh, 50 gram sample of water was heated from 25 degrees to 75 degrees. How much energy was used to warm the sample? Okay, number one. Now, it is very important that you study the heating curve that goes from all the way through the heat transfer process for a substance and has five major sections to it. Uh, temperature change occurs only in a pure condensed phase. That means pure substances. When two phases are in contact, like solid and liquid, you will not find uh, a temperature change. What is happening to the molecules in that case? The energy is trans being transferred into kinetic energy, and from the kinetic energy is pulling the molecules apart, as in the physical forces holding together. Melting, uh, ice is held together by electrostatic forces. Well, you're, when you heat, they overcome those forces, and by vibrations, and that's energy, kinetic energy. And then, of course, the heat liquids, and here's another liquid gas interface, and then if you heat, heat the gas. Now, these type problems will take segments of these, okay? So please study this with due diligence. If there is no temperature change, we use Q for heat or delta H. Both of them are the same. It did, you'll run into both terms, symbols, in various textbooks. Uh, is M delta H of transition. If you are in a temperature change condition, Q equals MC delta T. Now, I want to encourage you to just read, go into the worksheets and read some of the problems to be sure that you can get comfortable with the ideas that they, when they, when you read one, oh, that's melting, and then at the end of melting, you've got to warm the ice water kind of thing, like we did in our example. At the same time, you have uh, the solvent water cooling down, so you have to take three items into account. So it's very important that you read through some of these uh, calorimetry problems. Uh, there's some on, online worksheets and so forth, so that uh, you can be comfortable with setting up your uh, calculations. But anyway, this is a temperature change problem. T1 was uh, equal to 25 degrees C. T2 is equal to 50 degrees Celsius. C is a specific heat. Uh, specific heat is the amount of energy necessary to raise the temperature of a substance, pure substance, one degree Celsius. Now that can be one calorie or it can be 4.184 joules. So that joules per gram per degree Celsius is what it's mean. And just for embellishment here, this is also 1.000 uh, calorie per gram degree Celsius if you were working in the world of calories for, for whatever reason. Uh, the mass is 50 gram sample of water. Now, one of the things in these types of problems, you'll be reading along, and it'll ask you to set up a problem and answer it, and it's in water, and, but they won't say anything else. They'll give you milliliters. Um, reaction took place in 50 milliliters, okay? And then they won't tell you what the weight it's receiving the energy, and that's very important. When you get the uh, mass of water in milliliters, it's one gram per mil. So, one milliliter, H2O, is equal to one gram H2O. So if you're given, say, a problem like this, 50 milliliters, da 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 da, and okay, well, M is going to be 50 milliliters. 50 milliliters is going to be 50 grams. Okay, uh, we got MC delta T. The delta <coughs> T is 50 uh, degrees C. So now we can set up the MC delta T. Uh, calculation 50, 50 grams uh, 
4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius and then times the temperature change which is 50 degrees Celsius and that comes out I got 10,460 joules. Now if you needed to determine that in kilojoules simply divide by a thousand move your decimal three places to the left 10.46 kilojoules in that uh, calculation. Now, I want to emphasize one thing about something like this. The, the problem in itself is um, relatively straightforward. But one of the things that you want to keep in mind here is how the heat flows. Who's receiving the heat? And who's giving the heat? Okay, in this problem, it simply said that a 50 grams of water was heated. Well, what did you use to heat the water? Anybody? It, you don't know. Okay, so it's some device that heats the water. We put a candle under there if we have to. See what I'm telling you? This is delivering heat into that body. The water is endothermic relative to exothermic down here. So this is what's delivering the heat into some arbitrary heating device. And the temperature goes from 25 to 75 degrees. Okay, the point I'm trying to make is you can get heat delivered into water from other sources. For example, a chemical reaction, exothermic reaction, will deliver heat into a sample of water, just like the candle delivering heat. The candle is, uh, I don't know, maybe be the reaction and the water's the surroundings. Here's the reaction, the system, and there are the surroundings receiving the heat, okay? And when we do the uh, lab thing today, you'll see the curve go up, which is increasing te uh, temperature of the, uh, the surroundings. Well, it's exothermic to the, to the reaction. I got the choice. Any questions on that? And the next one is heat of fusion. Okay, of water is 80 calories per gram. How many grams of ice could one melt if 3,200 calories of energy is used? Well, terminology is one of the things that you need to get comfortable with also. Heat of fusion, heat of vaporization. When you talk about fusion, that's melting or freezing, either way. If you're talking about uh, heat of vaporization, you can also equate that to heat of condensation if you wanted to, but it's the same number. In other words, this one is 80 calories per gram of water. It takes 80 calories per gram uh, of ice to convert it from uh, solid to a liquid. And we have used in our problem 3,200 calories. Now, since this is a melting, freezing uh, type of problem, uh, we have Q equals M times the delta T, which is delta H of T, which is a transition constant. And it's asking for mass, so we need mass is equal to the energy used, which is 3,200, over the transition constant, which is heat of, heat of fusion. And so the mass of ice that you can melt, 3,200 uh, joules, 80 calories per per gram. This is wait a minute. I got 3,200. I put joules. Sorry, calories. Okay, 80 calories per gram, and the units invert and multiply, which cancel out, and I get 40 grams ice in there. Uh, B choice. So I gave number one was an MC delta T problem where you, 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 it was visibly uh, temperature change and the water was receiving the heat and it, so you calculated heat in the water. <coughs> Here is a uh, change of state solid to liquid uh, and you use the M delta H problem. Now number three 
uh, which of the following is not a closed system? Well, what are the conditions for a closed system? Delta V must equal zero. That is the primary condition for a um, closed system. There are three situations that identify closed system, which ultimately come delta V equals zero. Okay, if the sum of the change in molar volumes of the reactants is equal to sum of the molar volumes of the products, then that gives you zero. Sum of the right, sum of the left, difference is zero. Uh, bomb calorimetry. And that's Q equals M times C sub B. And, I'm uh, oh, sorry, uh, C sub V delta T. And got deltas going all over the place. Anyway, this is a uh, calorimeter constant. That is a given. Unless I give you Q and delta T and you calculate it. But it is typically given to you by the manufacturer. And then you put the sample in this. Uh, container and you run your experiment okay and you can get the heat delivered uh, by the sample into the water that's around the jacket uh, and uh, solution phase reactions this is where we did all the heating curve stuff and this is collectively known as calorimetry general calorimetry and most of the experiments that you'll do or ever see again will be in these styrofoam cups like you see on the demo table up here okay so let's see what kind of outcome we have here uh, a choice was H2 as a gas plus bromine as a gas uh, goes to 2H BR as a gas. Okay, is that a closed system, guys? Yes. Yes, it is. Got two molar volumes here, two molar volumes here, the same delta V of the molar volumes equal to zero, so it's a closed system. Uh, B, reaction and bomb. Calorimeter. Is that a closed system? Yes, that's one of the primary. It's a steel jacketed device where you run a, a reaction in the center core and it sends uh, heat into the water surrounding that core. And then you measure the temperature change and apply the C sub V value and have your total energy change. And finally, an acid based reaction in aqueous solution. Yeah, that's a uh, closed system. Acid plus base gives heat. It's exothermic, matter of fact. For if it was HCl and NaOH, it's definitely exothermic. I think we could try. I've got some sodium bicarbonate, which is classified as a base, along with a um, uh, citric acid, and you'll find it's an endothermic. That's an endothermic reaction that you saw on the. Sheet that you have, I handed out. Uh, all of them. Uh, that's a condensation of steam. That's D. Uh. This is an open system. Why is it an open system? H2O in the gas phase goes to H2O in the liquid phase. Yes. Now watch this. If you if you haven't if I haven't net, said it enough, this is one mole. That's one mole. That's true, but it's not in gas phase. Only molar volumes. This is one vm, and the vm over on the product side is zero. Liquids and solids do not have molar volumes, so that is a uh, condensation type reaction. And as it condenses down, uh, the um, system is an open system. Delta V doesn't equal uh, zero in case. So D choice in our 
problem. Please. Next one, I gave you a, a reaction. Carbon disulfide as a liquid going to carbon disulfide as a gas, and the heat of reaction is given to be 29.0 uh, kilojoules, okay, endothermic. And we're asked to calculate the uh, total energy change. Well, first law of thermo comes at you in various ways. The change in energy is internal energy, called the EI, internal energy which is due to the uh, chemistry and structure of the molecules and the state of existence. Ice has a certain water geometry and it's cold and it's hung together. So all that is internal energy. Okay, is E final minus E initial. That is, where did it start and where does it end? The reactants, products kind of thing. That's, and it'll also see Q plus W, where Q is the heat of reaction, and W is work of the reaction, of the system. Well, it's just the work of the reaction. Let's just leave it there. Now, I've worked out a standard state equation. Actually, and I didn't mention this, I don't think, it's delta H of the reaction plus pressure delta V. That's the true form of the first law equation. But I'm giving it to you in terms of standard thermodynamic conditions, 25 degrees, one atmosphere. And so I made the conversions of one atmosphere uh, under those conditions. And so the one you should use is internal energy is delta H of the reaction plus uh, 2.5 delta V, where you have to determine what that is this compression or expansion in this case. So this is the one you will use. And in this concept, you must assign a sign. Mm -hmm. Assign a sign if it is a compression reaction, it's endothermic at work. If it's an expansion, It's a exothermic work. It, the molecules relax as it expands the volume. But it's just like squeezing the balloon or letting the balloon burst and the molecules go out and relax. Okay, so in our problem, we have the delta H already given right here. So all we have to do is figure what delta V is. Well, delta V is an expansion here. It's going from, I'll rewrite it just for emphasis. Uh, what is what is Vm for a liquid? It's zero. Zero liters or whatever. Zero is zero. And then it goes to uh, one Vm, one molar volume. At standard condition. Matter of fact, standard at standard atmosphere gas law conditions, that's 22.4. What is it at standard thermodynamic conditions? Well, you have to use uh, 298 over 25 degrees is where you are in th standard thermodynamics. It gets kind of iffy and you get everything in thermodynamics. You got to know which one to use. 298 over 273 is your expansion factor. I think it comes out about 24 uh, liters, something like that. You can multiply that down to 22.4 and it'll give you the sta thermodynamic standard volume whatever that is. Well, anyway, uh, in, in this, delta V is equal to 1 and is an expansion. Okay? And if it's expansion, work uh, is less than 0 or exothermic. That means assign a negative to the delta V. Okay? Assign a, a negative. So when we lay this problem out, using this equation, we have the internal energy is equal to, uh, well, I'll bring it back in here, 
29 kilojoules. That's given on the end. Kilojoules right there. And then it's got a plus, and then you have to make your assignment 2.5 times uh, minus 1. Because this is an expansion. It's expanding. It's going from a liquid, where to go liquid, to a gas. So that you have to assign a negative to the delta V. Okay? And so the outcome of this is 29.0 uh, minus 2.5 kilojoules is the net change in internal energy. And I got uh, 26.5. This is not a hard concept, but it's an important concept uh, in understanding the first law of thermodynamics. And so four was C choice. We have uh, N2 as a gas plus uh, 3H2 as a gas going to 2NH3 as a gas. I mean, all of these expansion compression things are limited to gases. Anyway, here we have 4Vm going to 2Vm. Since the vo molar volume total is decreasing, uh, decreasing molar volume, that's a compression reaction. Therefore, molecules are gaining energy. It's like squeezing the balloon. When you squeeze down on the balloon, compressing it, the molecules push back on your hands. They're gaining more energy. And so that is work is greater than zero, and that defines endothermic. A choice. Now those are not too far different from what I will be giving you on, uh, on exam day. I think it's pretty fundamental in terms of the uh, first law and energy change and that, that concept. Where you get tricky is when you get into the calorimetry stuff. So please, please spend some time working on the calorimetry and convince yourself that you're